Hello everyone, welcome to PSPICE Tutorials. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the simulation of single phase half bridge inverter using the RCAD PSPICE Allegro simulation tool. To start with, this will be the circuit I will be constructing in the simulation tool. At the input, we have two supplies of value Vs by 2 each. We have a purely inductive load which also has a resistive component. We have two transistors Q1 and Q2 and two diodes D1 and D2. Please note this terminal is a ground terminal. Also, I will be showing the waveforms for these set of waveforms as shown in this particular slide. We have the input voltage, output voltage, current across transistor 1 and 2 and lastly the load current waveform. Let us start the circuit construction by launching the RCAT PSPICE tool. Here I am going to start a new project. I will give the name as half bridge inverter. I will make sure the type of the project selected is P-SPICE analog or mixed AD. Then I will select a location for saving all the circuit files. I will click OK. Here I will select the create blank project option. And it will take me to the schematic window. To start placing parts, let us first enable the place part window. Click on this icon right here. It will enable the place part window. Let us start with the input voltages first. So I will search for VDC. Select VDC source. I want two sources here. So I will place them like this. Then I will search for the transistor. Specifically I will select Q2N2222. You can see it is a power BJT. Select that. Let me place it here. Now I will horizontally flip them. Then I want two diodes. So I will select D1N1190. It is a power diode. Click R on the keyboard to rotate it and place it here. Now I will place load. I will go for searching R here then click R analog. Place it here. Then search for L. Select L analog and place it here. Let me readjust the components a little. Right. So, I will start wiring now. You can click on this icon to enable wiring and start connecting the components. As I said, this particular node is the ground terminal. So click on this icon here to place a ground. Select zero cap sim. Place it here. Then enable wiring once again and connect it to the ground node. Let me just reset the values for V1 and V2 here. And these must be of equal value. So I will make it as 50 volt each. With such an input voltage value, the output voltage will vary from plus 50 volts to minus 50 volts and the overall switching operation has to be managed by introducing a proper pulsed voltage supplies at the base and emitter terminals of this transistor. So I will search for vpulse, select vpulse slash source, connect here and here. 
let me flip them horizontally once again I'll enable wiring once again and connect the terminals to the base and emitter terminals of the transistor. The values of these pulse voltage parameters I'll specify first. I'll start with V1 equals to 0 volts, V2 equals to 5 volts. Delay for Q1 is 0. The rise time and fall time I'll keep it as 2 microseconds. The pulse width is a very very important parameter here so you have to be very careful while giving the values of pulse width. Since the type of the load is inductive we should also let the diodes conduct in between when the transistors are not conducting. So I'm going to introduce a pulse width of let us say 5 milliseconds and let the overall period of operation be 20 milliseconds. Now coming to the parameters of the second pulsed voltage, V1 and V2 remain the same, that is they are 0 and 5 volts respectively. This transistor as we know should not be turned on when the first transistor is on, so I will create a delay of 10 milliseconds for this transistor. Rise time and fall time, once again I am going to keep it the same, that is 2 microsecond each. Coming to the pulse width, I will take the same pulse width of 5 milliseconds. And lastly, the period of operation is 20 milliseconds once again. Please note, I am not going to discuss the principle of working of this inverter circuit. I already have created a video on that. You can either click on the link that is shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the link of that video in the description below. I highly suggest you to watch that video first before you continue watching this video because unless you know the principle of working, the waveforms that I plot may not give full information to you. Right, assuming that you already have watched that, let me now move on to the load part. Now since I have considered an inductive load here, the ratio of L by R should be very very greater than the period of operation and to obtain a very smooth load current waveform, the ratio L by R should be equal to the value of the pulse width. So I will consider the value of L1 as 5 Henry and R1 as 1 ohm. These values are very important because having any random value may provide a distorted output load current waveform. Right, with that we have specified all the values for the components that are used. Let us continue the simulation. But before that I have to create a simulation profile. So select P spice menu icon. Click on new simulation profile. Give a name for the simulation profile. For example, I will give half bridge. Click on create. A new window would appear. Click on that. In the analysis type, let it be time domain or transient. No changes in the options menu. Coming to the run time, let me run it for let us say 2 cycles. And since the period what I have considered is 20 milli, I will run the simulation for 40 milliseconds. Coming to the next option, start saving data, let it be at 0. And finally, coming to the maximum step size, I'll consider a value very small, let it be 0 0.01 milliseconds. Apply these settings. And now I will run the simulation. Once again, a pop-up would appear, click on that. This is the simulation window. In fact, you are getting a simulation window means you do not have any errors or warnings in your circuit. Let me come back to the circuit and place some markers. I'll first show the input voltage waveform. So select a differential marker, put it here. Then I'll come to the load, put it here. Then select a current marker and put it across the inductor terminal. Then we want current across the emitter terminals of Q1 and Q2. So put two more current markers across the emitter terminal of Q1 and Q2 respectively. 
Please make sure the values of R1 and L1 are 1 and 5. And now coming to the simulation window, I have multiple plots. Let me just put them into separate plot windows. Right. So these are the waveforms what I said at the beginning I would be plotting. At the very top we have the input voltage which is of 50 volt. Then we have the output voltage. Let me just show you what is the overall range of variation for output voltage. I'll click on this window. Go to cursor. I'll place the cursor here. Let me just drag the results window here. Right. You can see here it is 49.945. So the maximum value is almost equal to 50. Now I'll put the cursor on the other end. You can see it is minus 50.362. So it is varying between plus 50 and minus 50 and therefore it produces an alternating waveform and hence the output is said to be AC. The third waveform what we have here is for the emitter current of transistor Q1. This is the emitter current of transistor Q2. Please note transistor Q1 conducts between 0 and 5 milliseconds and transistor Q2 conducts between 10 and 15 milliseconds. Please note we have plotted here emitter current and you can see it is actually negative. You can just change that by double clicking on this icon and going to the leftmost space and putting a negative symbol there. So that will change the waveform into a proper one. I'll do the same for Q2 waveform as well. Right. So you can now see that transistor Q1 conducts between 0 to 5 milliseconds and transistor Q2 between 10 and 15 milliseconds. This is absolutely fine. Now coming to the last waveform, this is what is the most important waveform. Please note this is almost an idealistic waveform what we have gotten here and this is purely because of the selection of values for L1 and R1. If you change those values then the waveform will become distorted. I'll show how it is distorted a little later but before that let me place some text labels on these waveforms. Right. So the first one is the input voltage waveform, then is the output voltage, emitter current of Q1 but it is minus IE, the same applies for Q2 and lastly we have the load current. Coming back to the circuit, let me just illustrate what will happen to the load current waveform if I change the values of L and R to a disappropriate value. For example, I'll change it let us say to 3 milli. I'll remove all the markers here. I'll only plot the load current. Right, I'll run the simulation. Right, you can now see the waveform is completely disproportionate and it is nowhere near the idealistic current waveform we are expecting across the load. That is why it is very important that you find a proper value of L and R to obtain a proper output load current waveform. Right, you can see I changed it back to 5 Henry and now I am getting an idealistic waveform across the load. Right. That's it about the simulation of a single phase half bridge inverter with an inductive load using the RCAD piece by simulation tool. If you like this video, kindly like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on piece by tutorials. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.